Welcome to Arkansas Wildlife. One of the tastiest fish in all of Arkansas waters is the crappie. And this week's show is all about crappie fishing and crappie eating. We're starting with a trip to Lake Brewer with a couple of game and fish biologists, Matt Schrader and Matt Horton, to do a little trolling for crappie. That's a good fish. When you see one that's snatching the planter board like that, he's a good fish. Next up, a stop at Lake Conway, where we're gonna be fishing with nets. Our biologists are gonna be sampling crappie and showing us how they keep tabs on Lake Conway's healthy crappie population. White to 88. And finally, my favorite part of this episode, we're heading to the kitchen to cook Lake Conway slab crappie cakes. All that and this week's winner of an Arkansas hunting and fishing license right after this break. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all, for less. There you go. Right there. My God. Arkansas anglers go crazy for crappie. That is pretty. With a daily limit of 30 fish per angler and the crappie's well-deserved reputation as excellent table fare, there's a lot to like about these fish. On social media, you can find multiple groups that offer natural state crappie anglers a place to share photos and fishing information. One crappie page on Facebook has more than 8,000 members more evidence of the passion of Arkansas crappie enthusiasts. We're heading out on a warm summer day to Lake Brewer, a reservoir that provides water for residents of Faulkner and Conway counties. But Brewer also has a reputation as a great place to reel in big numbers of crappie local guide Wayne Stewart, along with Arkansas Game and Fish Commission biologists Matt Schroeder and Matt Horton, are using a technique that you're more likely to see in deep sea fishing or on northern U.S. lakes. But instead of trolling giant lures, they're using small crankbaits to entice crappie bites. That bait's coming through the water wobbling, and I don't know if everyone can hear that rattle inside there. It just goes across the top of their head, and they just hit it to actually see what it is. Stewart typically rigs 10 rods of different lengths with their lure set to run at different depths to maximize coverage. We have four foot separation in our rods. I start out with an 18, the next one's a 14, and then the next one's a 10. I do that to, to keep them from getting tangled so bad and cover more water. The longer ones go to the front of the boat and they have the least amount of line out. This method of fishing works best in the summertime when water temperatures are high and the fish have moved to deeper water. Stewart uses his boat's electronics to locate different structure and then navigates between the points at slow speeds, in this case, about one and a half miles an hour. This is a, a brush pile. These are single logs laying out there. There's some fish out there by them, the little white specks you can see here are fish. This is some fish or bait fish in the water column right here. Stewart freely admits that this type of fishing isn't for everyone. One drawback is the cost. I tell everyone it's not, it's a great way to catch summertime crappie, but it's not a cheap way. So when you've got, right now we've got uh, 10 rods in the water, $6 crankbaits on them, that's 60 bucks just right there. And I generally lose one or two every trip. Snagging them on trees? Snagging them on, on the brush piles. Yeah. And, and the timber at Grish Ferry. I, uh, I've gone out days when I would lose 10 crankbaits. Mm. So it's, uh, like I say, it's not, a, it's not a cheap way to fish. But he says it's great for guiding clients that just want to catch a lot of fish, especially young anglers. I found this to be a way to get kids, because usually the kids like reeling stuff in. Oh, yeah. So if you get, they usually, they get to reel quite a bit here, and uh, they have, Time and they don't get bored too quick. Yeah. And I love to, I love to see kids catch fish. I, uh, I like seeing 
men like you catch fish, but I love to see kids catch fish and women. I've taken, I've taken women out and, and they've had a big time. He also uses planer boards that trigger a flag when a fish strikes the lure. Get this bait a little further out away from the boat with a shorter rod. And if you got, if you got kids in the boat, it's actually a pretty good way for them to catch fish because it's so hard for a young kid to, to handle an 18 foot rod. So you can have these just on a bass rod. The line hooks to, to here and when the fish hits it, it'll pull the, pull the flag down. One of the biggest benefits is covering a lot of water. Gotcha. So with this spread, we've got, we're covering almost 100 foot of water right now. Wow. So, well, 75 anyway. How far how far back are our lines, our baits right now? Okay, these are these are 45, and I think this one's 55. And those two are 70. That one's 75. Okay. So I just got I got a hodgepodge of mixtures out here to try to find where the fish are, and then we can once we see one rod catching more fish, we can kind of adjust our depths to that and adjust bait colors. After a slow start with a few false alarms. Fish yeah. on right here. Well, no, we just hit a brush pile. Got our hopes up. I say I felt it. No, no. You sure? It's fish. Fish? Pull Let it me straight see. up. No, it's a brush pile. I just see okay. where we're at right there. The fish finally started eating. numbers quickly started adding up. Arkansas harbors both black and white crappie, which can bewilder even seasoned crappie anglers. So how do you tell the difference? That's the good part about sharing a boat with fisheries biologists. One of the ways to distinguish between the black and white crappie, the, the real way besides its color pattern is the number of dorsal spines. White crappie will have six hard spines across the top. And black crappie will have seven or eight. Uh, and you can kind of tell, and you'll see that they'll look more elongated and narrow. And basically one of the reasons why it looks like that is the black crappie spines go a little further forward than the white crappie. No matter which species you're catching, a successful day of Arkansas crappie fishing is hard to beat. White 252, white 234. Part of the allure of angling is the mystery of what's beneath the water's surface. But the unknown isn't conducive to effective fisheries management. That's why Arkansas Game and Fish Commission biologists brave the elements each year to learn more about the state's fish populations. What? 3.30. In the case of crappie, that means catching fish in the most efficient way possible. And that doesn't involve a shiner or a crappie jig. Trap netting is the most efficient way to collect crappie uh, in most Arkansas lakes. Um, it's just kind of the standard sampling method that we have. The information gathered through trap netting allows fisheries managers to track changes in fish populations and also informs decisions about size and creel limits. We're trying to evaluate the crappie population based on our, our standard crappie assessment. And our standard crappie assessment looks at density, growth, uh, looks at size structure, age structure, and, and recruitment. Before biologists can run those numbers, they have to run their nets. Trap nets are modified fight nets that are tied off and stretched perpendicular to the bank. A lead line connects to a series of chambers where fish become trapped. Basically what these fish are doing is, is during dusk and dawn, they're kind of following the bank looking for uh, food. And whenever they run into that net, which is perpendicular to the bank, they just kind of follow that net down into the trap. 
and they get stuck. Nets are left in the water for 24 hours before they're hauled in to a work boat. From there we dump the uh, net into a, uh, a stock tank on the boat and, and then after that when we get to work up the fish. Working up the fish means distinguishing between black and white crappie, taking measurements, and recording every fish caught. White 260. By sampling the lake's population every year, game and fish biologists can better understand trends and adapt regulations to fit the fishery. Every year, uh, biologists will go out into the respective districts and they will sample lakes that are uh, considered crappie kind of lakes, uh, lakes that have a good crappie population. The Game and Fish Commission's crappie netting work takes place in the fall and winter. That can make for some seriously uncomfortable days when you're dipping your hands in and out of cold water. The crappie management plan suggests that crappie are trap netted or sampled from the months starting in September through January for three consecutive months. On Lake Conway, we sample October, November, and December. And the reason why that this is kind of our standard sampling time is, is this is the time of year on our lakes in central Arkansas where crappie are moving in shallow again to feed on shad and get ready for the cold winter. Game and fish crews typically set 10 nets per night when they're trap netting crappie, but here on Lake Conway, they don't need that many. On Lake Conway, we get really high catch rates, and so we don't have to set the maximum number of 10 nets per night. We generally go with only five because our catches are so high. Grayson, get in here and help him. That, that whatever. Lake Conway is just in a productive watershed. Uh, there's a lot of nutrients that enter the lake and the nutrients is what causes the productivity of the lake, the, the production of the phytoplankton and zooplankton that goes up the food chain and translates into big healthy crappie and, and that's why there's a lot of healthy fish in the lake. That's information that wouldn't be possible without sacrificing a small percentage of fish. We need a few whites in the uh... 100 to 200 range. So on a given year, uh, we need to keep a certain amount of, in, of each size class uh, crappie. So our goal is always to get 10 fish of each inch class. So we will end up keeping roughly 150 to 250 crappie, uh, ranging from three inches upwards to 16, sometimes a 17 inch fish. Why 368, don't need him, do Don't need him. We don't need him, he's a good one though. The fish that we keep are the most important fish uh, that we sample because based on their ages uh, is how we determine the ages of the ones that we release. And so these are very important, especially the older fish, which I know a lot of folks don't like us to keep, the bigger fish, but these are the most important. Biologists determine the age of fish by taking out an ear bone called an otolith. We're able to take that ear bone and section it and look at it under a uh, microscope and determine its age. It's kind of like looking at the rings on a tree. The removal of a relative handful of fish is a worthwhile sacrifice because of the wealth of information it provides. And the number of sacrificed fish pales in comparison to the number that go right back in the lake. We're actually releasing sometimes upwards of 10,000 crappies, so very few fish do we actually keep. With the crappie's tasty reputation, that's something anglers can look forward to on their next fishing trip. One of the best parts about crappie fishing is what comes last. It's the crappie eating. Today we're gonna to make Lake Conway slab crappie cakes. This is a recipe from Matt Schroeder, one of our district fisheries biologists, and actually the guy who manages Lake Conway, pretty famous crappie fishery here in Arkansas. If you've ever had crab cakes, this is essentially what we're making today, except instead of crab, we're gonna use crappie.
Our first step is to bring a pot of water to a boil. Add some Zatarain's crab boil. Once those flavors start to blend through the water, we drop in our crappie, let it return to a boil. It takes about three or four minutes for that crappie to float, and that's our signal that it's ready to go. We drain the water off the crappie, and set it aside, and let it cool for about 30 minutes to an hour. While that crappie's cooling down, we're gonna take that time to chop our vegetables, our celery, our green onions, our parsley, the jalapeno if you're gonna use that, squeeze a half a lemon into a jar or bowl, and crunch up your Ritz crackers. So we'll be ready to put it all together when that crappie cools down. We're gonna crumble it up into small pieces like this, where it resembles lump crab meat. We start by beating an egg in our bowl. To that, we add the vegetables, our celery and parsley. We're gonna use the onions and jalapenos, although they are optional. Add the Cajun seasoning, a third of a cup of mayonnaise, a tablespoon of spicy brown mustard, and the juice of half a lemon. Mix all that together. Add the crappie fillets, get that well blended. And then to that mixture, we're gonna add enough of the crushed cracker so that it's kind of a paste where we can form the mixture into patties. To make the crab cakes, use your hands to form the mixture into a shape the size of a small hamburger patty. Once the patty is the size you want it, you wanna coat it with the remaining crumbled up Ritz crackers. We form the crappie cakes. The next step is to brown them on both sides in a skillet over medium high heat and a little bit of peanut oil and butter. Once the cakes are browned on both sides, transfer them back to a baking sheet. Put those in an oven preheated to 350 degrees for 10 minutes. And there you have it, Lake Conway slab crappie cakes. Arkansas Wildlife presents the Watch and Win Giveaway. During each episode of Arkansas Wildlife, we'll give away an Arkansas resident hunting and fishing license. At the end of this season, we'll be giving away $500 worth of fishing gear with everything you need for outdoor adventures on Arkansas lakes and streams. It's all provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit the Arkansas Wildlife webpage at arkansaswildlife.com and click on the Watch and Win icon to enter. This week's winner is Greg Spann from Bauxite. Congratulations and thanks for watching.